Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure, here's a performance report on heavy-duty RPM motor oil. As you know, scientists tested hundreds of motor oils in laboratories and in crankcases before discovering heavy-duty RPM. Only after these scientists were sure did they claim heavy-duty RPM doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. And now additional proof is being furnished by users themselves. One taxicab company, for example, operating in the tough grind all cabs go through, found that heavy-duty RPM actually reduced engine wear 71%, more than doubling engine life. So for top performance from your car, get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, The Deadly Pines, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'm sure you've heard people talk romantically about towering pines, majestic pines, pines that fling their branches like banners against the sky. Well, I come from a lumbering family. I love trees, love them, and now I fear them with all my heart. And I'm not the only one. Everybody in this little town of high timber is afraid, because in the last few weeks, no less than four forest fires have been deliberately set by someone in our midst. So far, we've been able to put them out. But there's always the next time. And the pines all around us, the deadly pines, can become a flaming coffin. I need help, Mr. Valentine, and right away. Sincerely, Dave Heron. No, no thanks. No more coffee, Mr. Heron. How about you, Miss Brooks? Oh, I think I've had enough things. Okay, okay. Just fill mine up again, will you, Waddy? Yeah, Steve, yeah, sure thing. With the whole town having the jitters, I might as well close up this place. <laughs> High timber diner. High timber morgue is more like it. Yeah, Waddy, yeah, I know. Now, Mr. Heron, as I'm beginning to get it, you have a personal reason for wanting me to find out who sets those forest fires. I mean, in addition to your concern as a citizen of High Timber. Yeah, the sheriff, Sheriff Steppens, doesn't seem to be able to find out anything about these fires and... I can't take any more chances. If the fire crowns in the big timber up there, I'll be ruined. You in particular, Mr. Heron? I mean, more so than the others around here? That's right. The others who have holdings here may have other property, other investments. I don't. I just got out of school of forestry a couple of years ago, took over this place my father left me, and... Well, if this thing is destroyed, I'll, I'll have nothing. I see. Well, tell me, these fires, uh, how come that they were always gotten under control? Oh, that's the crazy part of it, Valentine. Whoever sets these fires... First, make sure it's in a place that has a natural fire line, a, a road, a ledge of rock, maybe. That's been the only thing that saved us. The forest and the trees. Yes, they're jealous of us human beings who come in and take their glory away from them. I know. So they fight back. Oh, yes, how they fight back. Why, do people don't believe in superstitions anymore. And I was a good logger, as good as they come. But the trees got even with me. For no reason anybody could give, a tree crashed on me. Now I, I can't walk like a man no more. The trees fight back. Oh, this is so much nonsense. Somebody, some man sets those fires. This isn't any spirit of the forest. Yeah, the trees fight back in many ways. They make men, lumbermen, fight between themselves. Hatred and greed and bitterness. They make pretty good weapons for the trees. Uh-huh, what well, these sort of indirect weapons, huh? But the trees are smart. They've been here a long time before we came here, and they're going to be standing a long time after we're gone. Valentine, please, listen to me. These fires are senseless. First, 
taking the spots with the natural fire lines. And second, they've taken place in the holdings of different people around here. Mine, C.J. Murdoch's, Frank Redmond's, a sheriff. The sheriff is a lumberman, too? Sure, this is a small town. Stebbins is sheriff because there was nobody running against him. The sheriff won't be able to do anything against the trees. When was the last fire, Mr. Heron? How long ago? Mm, four days ago in the Murdoch holdings. Well... Maybe that was the last of them. Since there's no reason for these fires, maybe they'll stop just as suddenly as they started. Gee, I'd sure like to share your optimism, Miss Brooks, but I don't think I can. No, no, the fires won't stop. Well, Heron, I don't know how much use I can be, but uh, might as well begin to look around. Still can't get over that I'm C.J. Murdoch, huh, my dear? Well, that is, lumbering is a man's game, and I... And a dainty creature like me is in it? Well, I can boss a crew of loggers and can swing an axe right alongside the best of them. That I don't doubt. Well, it is a tough game, and I don't ask for any favors because I'm the only woman in it, but about those fires... Yes? I'm just as scared of them as our young friend, Dave Heron. Well, tell me, how much damage did the fire cause to your property? Well, an acre or two burned out, but it looked as if it all was gone. We only have a volunteer fire department. We all work like dogs to try and stop the fire from spreading. Uh Uh-huh. Now, you're a practical, realistic woman, Mrs. Murdoch. Uh, Miss Murdoch. Oh. Well, anyway, there must be a good, solid reason for these fires. And I'd like you to think back and see if you can give us any sort of lead. Uh Uh-uh. Well, have you had any trouble with the other lumber owners? No. Oh, I did have some trouble with Stan a couple of weeks ago. Stan? Stan Kibrick. Big blonde giant of a man. One of the best toppers you'll find anywhere. But a troublemaker. Especially when he gets a couple of drinks in him. I fired him. Oh, now, that sounds interesting. Stan still around, high timber? Yeah. He's not working for anybody, as far as I can see. Well, isn't that kind of unusual? If he's as good as he is? Well, Frank Redmond had him for a while, but... Had a fight with him. So did Dave Heron. I guess Stan's just no good for here. Uh Uh-huh. Well, thanks a lot, Miss Murdoch. At least it's a beginning. Stebbins Lumber. It's the little building over there, Angel. George, I don't like this whole situation. It's so easy for anyone to start a fire, strike a match. And there's no and... sense to it. No one gains anything. Mister, I want to talk to you. What? And you'd better listen. Good. Oh, yeah. You Stan Kibrick, friend? Yeah. And get this straight, stranger. You must have come here for only one reason. You try to frame me for those fires and I'll kill you. Well, now, that's a nice, friendly welcome to town, Stan. One of them hired you to snoop around, huh? I don't care which one. I'm not getting framed. And I'm not leaving high timber till I find out who the fire bug is. Well, then we... We can work together, Mr. Kibrick. Just one happy little family. You stay out of this, miss. And, mister, if you're going to see that fat-faced sheriff, you can give him my message, too. Well, Stan, you must agree that you do seem to have a nice motive. Yeah. And you've got nothing to lose by burning down the property of people you have no love for. I hate them. Thinking they're better than me. But this sort of thing catches up with them by itself. I don't have to do anything about it. Oh, the trees get back in them, huh? That's the second time I heard that kind of thing, Stan. All I'm going to see is that I don't get to be a fall guy. And that I'm in on the finish. You or nobody else is going to stop that. I'd remember that if I were you, stranger. The trees fight back with hatred and greed and violence. Uh, And we're still on our way to see the sheriff, remember? Here's Stebbins' place, Brooksy. Don't you, don't you call me a pirate, Redmond? Pirate, pirate, that's yeah. what you are, Stebbins. I'll beat your head here. Yeah, more sweetness than light in there. Wait a minute, Angel, let the you chips fall some more. Yeah. All you can do is hijack my best men, yeah. offer them bonuses they never get. But they're afraid to squawk because you're the sheriff. Yep, sheriff. Sure. And you and Heron better not forget it. That Valentine guy that come here is going to get out now. I don't need any help. Mm, everybody's friendly. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop them fires without any help from outside. Yeah. Well, things simmer down. Oh, yeah. Come on. Some 
crackpots starting them fires for no reason at all. And I... I yeah? What can I do for you folks? Um, hello? My name's Valentine, Sheriff Stebbins. Oh, oh. Now, now look here, Valentine. You don't need any meddlers here in high timber. What? Well, the door was open and you weren't exactly whispering. Oh, well... That's the way it's going to be. Now, we don't need any help Young here. Young man, we're... I'll give you my personal check for $500 if you catch the firebug before I'm forced to sell out. Now, look here, Redmond. I but... told you... Wait. Oh, no. What's that? What's that bell? Another fire. Sheriff! Sheriff! Redmond, fire! The biggest fire so far! Hurry up! Hurry up! Get over there. Down the hill. Yeah, it's starting to catch on fire. Give me one of those pumps, Aaron. Yeah, let's go, Valentine. If the wind ever shifts now, it's goodbye. George, George, I was looking for you. Well, see, I thought I told you to stay away from here. Well, I'm here with Carrie. Every man's up to his neck, so we're going to turn the cars around. Then we won't get caught if we have to make a run for it. It, it was such a close call. It, it was so close. Yeah, Brooksy. But it's under control now. Oh, it almost had its lick. Even though that rock slide over there made a darn good fire line. Oh, if I could only get my hands on the low down. That's the way everybody feels. But that doesn't do much good. Is it all really under control now? Yeah, just about, Angel. The men are just spreading around to keep watch a while, just in case the fire should break out again anywhere. A deadly pine. Hmm. What do you mean by that? No... No, the dead pines. Just a little while ago, they were alive. Uh, not... here, here, folks, I brought some coffee for you. Good hot coffee. Oh, you're a beautiful sight, Whitey. Real beautiful. Yeah, not much more a crippled ex lumberjack can do, is there? Here, here you are, young lady. Oh, thanks. This is the sheriff's property, ain't it? That's the second time for the sheriff. That's right, Whitey. Yeah, he's a big man. Stebbins is so sure he's a big man. Important. Yes, but the trees are bigger. And after a while, new trees will grow here with green leaves. And the leaves will rustle. And it'll sound like the trees laughing at Why it. Why, stop yeah. it. Nobody will ever find out who's setting them fires. And maybe nobody will ever stop them Cut either. it out with you, Whitey. I'm a big boy now. And I don't believe in wood spirits or goblins or, or deadly pines. And still, here we are. Exactly no place. Yeah, But there has to be some sense behind all this, a pattern. And I'm just beginning to make it out. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Maybe you're a driver who's managed to get through the winter on smooth tires. Well, summer is a different story. Heat is your tire's worst enemy. Heat saps the mileage out of tires, weakens them, and causes blowouts. So if your tires are on their last miles, now's the time to switch over to brand new Atlas tires. Independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations feature these famous Atlas tires, and they'll be glad to install them for you. With tough, rugged Atlas tires on your car, you know you're safe and secure. You'll find wide, flat treads on Atlas tires, treads that put more rubber on the road, give you better traction. And they're thick treads with good, deep grooves and hundreds of tough, anti-skid edges for greater safety. And furthermore, Atlas tires are backed by a written warranty that gives you 12 months protection against tire damage from any road hazard. A warranty that's honored by more than 38,000 Atlas dealers from coast to coast in the United States and in Canada, too. Convenient monthly budget terms are also available. All in all, your best tire deal is Atlas, so plan now to stop in soon, get a tire checkup, and ask about new Atlas tires at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car.
You come to the small lumbering community of high timber because there have been a number of senseless, horrible forest fires. You find the town seething with all sorts of violent emotions, and you quickly get together a substantial list of suspects, ranging from a bitter, crippled ex-logger to a sheriff who refuses your help as if it were poison. Yes, many, many things happen in a short time. But even if your name is George Valentine, you're nowhere near any solution when the latest fire has finally burned itself out and you're ready to go back to town. Oh, uh, Valentine, may I see you a minute? Them others still have to get all the equipment back in the car. Yes, yeah, Sheriff, what is it? Uh, well, I, I hope you didn't misunderstand what I, what I said to you back in the office. Misunderstand? Why, Sheriff, how could I? Well, I mean, I was uh, upset. I everybody ride me about these fires, and and in front of Redman, I uh, well, anyway, I want you to go ahead and see if you can find out anything about this firebug. I, I'll give you all the help I can. Hey, this change of heart, Sheriff. It isn't due to the fact that this fire is on your holdings that it was only a toss-up whether we'd ever get it under control. Well, of course, that's part of it, of course, but uh, it's uh, also that. Uh, this is a case I don't think I can ever solve. Uh, how do you go about looking for anybody? Nothing to start on. <clears throat> Nothing to go on. Uh, oh, well, I'll probably have to sell out. Sheriff. Sheriff, I've got to see you. What? Oh, uh, look, Kibrick. I- I'm busy right now. You, but you, you don't go... understand. I've been looking for you. I was way down the other side fighting the fire. Just got through. Okay, big boy. Take it easy, will you? Oh, uh, Valentine, I'm glad to see you're here. Maybe you can help. Well, how things have changed. Not you, too. I was out here earlier this afternoon. On my property? Why? I told you, Valentine, I was going to find out who set the fire. Yeah? Well, just before I noticed the fire broke out, somebody took a shot at me with a rifle. What's that? Yeah, I couldn't see who it was, but I guess he must have thought that I saw him and wasn't taking any chances. I tried to chase him, but then the fire started. You know exactly where you were when you were shot at? Well, not exactly, but uh, pretty much. Well, what's on your mind, Valentine? It's getting dark, but it's worth a chance while we still have all these people here. And it'd be very interesting if we found that empty cartridge. George, this is even more hopeless than looking for the proverbial needle. Hey, wait a minute, Angel. Something's going on over there. You'll be all right. Come on. Here. Hey, what's happened? Here now, take a sip of this. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Feel better? How's that? Hey, Whitey, Whitey, what's happened? Well, I, I found a cartridge right right there near the tree. Yeah, we heard you call out. I found a cartridge, but then somebody must have sneaked up behind me. I didn't see who it was, and he, he smashed me on the head. Yeah, yeah and the he... carriage is, the cartridge is going. Well, this time for good. Yeah, for good. Well... Nothing we can do now but go on back to town. The firebug is taking no chances. No chances at all. George, there was huh? a note left for you here at the hotel. All left by home. Well, the clerk doesn't know. Says so somebody must have watched him, and when he went in the back, left it right there near the cash register. Here it is. Hmm, let's see. Valentine, if you want to know who set the fires and why, be at lookout point tonight at 10, alone. If you are not alone, I will know it and will not be there. Uh Uh-huh. This is very interesting. There's no return address on the back. George, it's it's just a trick to get you out there. Maybe. But there isn't another lead in this whole crazy thing, not even the beginning of one. I want to go along with you, George. Yeah, I know you do, Angel. And you know that's why I can never let you. Oh, darling. Now, come on, come on. i got to make some inquiries about the location of Lookout Point. Uh, quarter after. Punctuality is certainly not one of our friend's virtues. Unless somebody found out about that note and made sure he'd never talk to me. Huh? Hey, who is that? What? Oh! It's hot. It's hot. It's so hot. Hey, hey, what was that? Where am I? What? Fire. The whole place is on fire. Oh, now, 
which way? There's got to be some way out. Oh, which way shall I go? That's it. Come on. Come on, Valentine. Don't lose your head. If the animal's head in this direction, this must be it. Oh, come on now. You must just keep going. Keep going. As long as you can. You George! Keep going. George, uh, where are you? Valentine! Roxy. Roxy! Bruce. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. oh, George. Oh, darling. Your hair, right, your eyebrows. No, no, no easy, Brooks. I'm okay. Valentine, we couldn't believe it when we saw you stumble out of those flames toward us. We didn't think you'd ever be anywhere near us. We didn't know where to look. That was a close one, all right. Yeah, it looks like this fire was checked, too. Yeah, but it took every bit of luck all of us had. There wouldn't be much explaining to do if I never get out of it. People would just say I was looking for evidence and got trapped in the fire. I never had a chance. I, I just couldn't sit in that hotel and do nothing, so I finally went out to look out point, and you weren't there. And then I saw the fire, and I had the most terrible feeling. Good for me that you did, Angel. Better let me take you to the car and get you back into town. You need a good night's rest. That I do. Everybody came over to see how you were. Carrie, Dave Heron, Sheriff Stebbins, Mr. Redman, even Whitey. They were also worried about you. Oh, yeah, sure. Everybody in high timber is worried about me. Especially the one who paid me that courtesy visit on Lookout Point. But tomorrow morning will be time enough to go into that. Valentine, I asked you to come down here to Sheriff Stebbins' office because even though I hired you, you've become involved with all of us here in High Timber. Yeah, and since we've reached a decision about what we're going to do, we thought we'd all get together this morning. A decision? This sounds momentous. We're selling out. All four of us. Oh, I see. Yes, after all the violence yesterday, what happened to Stan and Whitey and finally you, Mr. Valentine, we agree with Miss Murdoch that we can't take any more chances. But wouldn't you be taking a terrific loss, all of you? We sure will, my dear. Getting out with a piece of the pie is better than losing the whole darn shebang. Miss Murdoch has already contacted some people in Portland who are willing to gamble. There's no way we can fight it, Valentine. There's a madman loose somewhere, and it's only a question of time until he ruins all of us. That last fire was on my property, you know. When I took a long look at what was left of those five acres, I said to myself, let them call you a quitter, Carrie, but you're getting out. Uh Uh-huh. Of course, all of you should know that there's no madman or screwball involved in this case at all. That all the fires were set for a very sound financial reason. George, how do you figure that out? Oh, man, that's nonsense. Every one of the four of us has had at least one fire on his property, suffered loss of money. Okay, okay. Let me give you one way this thing could work. Someone, an unknown ex, wants to scare the neighbors and competitors into selling out for practically nothing. Now, look here, Valentine. Are you accusing one of us? Let me go on, will you, Sheriff Stebbins? So this uh, ex begins to set the fires, always making sure that there's a natural fire line around them. Doesn't want to destroy the timber that X is eventually going to get. But, George, there were fires on all the Yeah, I know, of course, Brooks. He had to be to avoid suspicion. But the blackmail by fire didn't work as quickly as X expected, and people, including us, began to snoop around. So X didn't even stop at attempted murder. And this morning, X's plan has succeeded. The whole thing still doesn't make any business sense. We're all selling out to people outside of high timber. Oh, X is smart. Yeah, very smart. Stooges will buy up this doomed, ill-starred timberland. X will operate the holdings through these stooges. The profits will be just as great, even though they're one step removed. Yeah, but to do all of this for a business reason... A couple of hundred thousand dollars will make some people do all sorts of incredible things. But still, where are we now? Valentine, do you know who Mr. X is? Sheriff... You'll notice I never said it was Mr. X. Because it's Miss X, isn't it, Carrie? What? Have you gone clear out of your head, Valentine? No, not at all. There's such a thing as reverse psychology, Carrie. What? And that's what made me think of you in the first place. Dave Heron, Sheriff Stebbins, Frank Redman, all of them talked about the possibility of having to sell out if the fires continued. They were sore and they yelled real loud. But they did the natural thing and talked about the practical matter of selling out. Yeah, we did. But so what? You never did, Carrie. The only woman in the crowd, the only woman in a tough, rough, all-man game, 
And you never talked of selling out. Not until now. Not until you've won. Why, I... You didn't talk about it because that was your real plan. And you were conscious of it. And were so, so careful to stay away from the subject. Just talk. Talk. What proof have you got? The only woman in a man's game. It double-crossed you, Carrie. That note which was left for me at the hotel. You can never tell who wrote it. How do you know that, Miss Murdoch? Well, I... It just stands to reason Don't squirm, Carrie. When you got through printing the note so carefully, you licked the envelope to seal it. And you didn't even stop to think that it would have some lipstick on the back flap. I didn't. I couldn't have... The note and the envelope are in my hotel room, Carrie. Any good police laboratory can prove it was your lipstick. All right. I did it. I'd have gotten away with it, too. The only woman. She's all yours, Sheriff. Um, George. Yeah, Brooksine. This case isn't really closed, you know. I have a surprise for you. Back at the hotel. Sometimes you drive in the country, sometimes you drive in town. Shift to the gas with all eight for top performance all around. Yes, Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you all eight high-performance qualities in correct balance, economy mileage, full power, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, quick starting, and area blending. So for top all-around performance, fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Hey, the note is here, but the envelope is gone. That... That's the surprise. Well, now, wait I a minute. I didn't think the envelope had any importance, and when I got through chewing a piece of gum this morning, I put it in that and threw it away. Oh, no. And, and, and there I was, talking about proof, boasting about having definite proof. Oh, it's lucky Carrie confessed. I told you I had a surprise. Yeah, a miracle of understatement. And you know, George, there's a lot of truth to this business of reverse psychology. Uh-huh. Staying away from the subject which is really very much in your mind. I often wondered why you stay away from ever mentioning our future. Now I know. You have wonderful, deep-seated plans, and you're afraid of letting them slip. Oh, darling. <laughs> Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Roland Morris was heard as Dave, Jeanette Nolan as Carrie, Victor Rodman as the Sheriff, Clayton Post as Stan, and Forrest Lewis as Redmond. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>